Okay, so just before we start, uh, we are going to do a warning. Uh, this is a, lot, a work in progress presentation. We, we have been working on this the last months, but there are still a lot of things that are not finished or that's the ongoing work, so be aware of that. Uh, okay, so the main reason why we are doing this is because this is a recurrent question so in the BIM community is what is the BIM overhead? And about, around this, there is a lot of uh, people who, who ask uh, if it's bad or not, and what is the difference, how is it better than running just in a native system, because BIM is a translation layer and, of course, an abstraction. And we, we, we heard this uh, in, numeral, in, in numerous instances, uh, for example, from the, from the user reports side, uh, well, we have issues on these. We have males who ask about performance regressions also between versions of Beam. Also, we have, uh, well, we have people from the company that employs us who, who have reported us issues, for example, in local runs that uh, even with really tiny data, it takes too much time to, to run a pipeline, comparing with one of the native systems, or that just running jobs takes just too long. So that's another another issue. Uh, so, and especially there was a, a publication, a paper that was published two years ago that uh, analyzed the performance of BIM versus the native systems, and it found one interesting result. And is that oh, is everything okay? Oh, wait, sorry, everything is okay. From the audio. Okay, sorry, I was just double checking because I was hearing messages. So, uh, so okay, so I was saying that this this scientific paper when they they analyze the difference between Beam and native systems and they report a worst case scenario of eight, uh, 58 times worse performance, which is quite extreme. But well, in the paper, they measure an average of between three and seven uh, X overhead, which is still not good. So the real internal question that comes and comes is what is the overhead of Beam as a translation layer? And of course, well, what we thought was the first, the best approach was to run a benchmark to measure and compare and compare and, and see if we can improve it. Uh, second warning here, performance results can be heavily biased and it's common that uh, performance it serves the purpose of narrative of marketing so and and some projects will probably say oh i'm faster than the other but really not many have reproducible tests or data so in the end it's not only also rule performance what matters also correctness of the results is more important sometimes or reliability that we can run the pipelines in, in the same time and of course, in some cases, it's price. I mean, if you want more performance, you pay more. So it depends. Hmm? So in BIM, we already had a benchmarking system that is called Nextmark. And we this is basically a business scenario of auctions, you know, online auctions. And this uses um, it's, it's, it's a streaming scenario. So it's, it's continuous queries. And it adapts really well to the BIM model. That's the reason why we introduced it uh, three or four years ago. Uh, and and, but it has some issues. So one of the issues that this has is that uh, it's not run at a scale at the moment. We have this uh, nice bench uh, performance uh, dashboards that we use to monitor any regression, and we have found many issues uh, because of that. But this uh, this is not run at a scale with a lot of data, which is a mistake that is probably my fault in part. Uh, also, and more important than this, this comes from a scientific pu publication that was not published in the end. So it's like the, not, not, it never became like an industry standard for, for streaming. So nobody in the industry has implemented this and we cannot compare the results of running this benchmark uh, with other systems like Spark or Flink. So, so we decided that we needed to use something else and that's why we checked TPCDS and we decided to use TPCDS. So Alexei, please. Okay, so currently, what is the TPCDS actually is and uh, why we decided to use it? Uh, so, oops. 
uh, several words about this benchmark. So it's a decision support benchmark that actually models kind of real life situation and application for decision su support system. So it includes uh, different queries and data, in, in data maintenance. But for us, it's, it's more important was uh, just uh, read queries. So it's a quite famous industry standard benchmark. Uh, it's part of TPC organization. Uh, it's already implemented for many analytical processing systems like uh, SQL databases, uh, NoSQL databases, Apache Spark, Flink, and so on. So it already contains a wide range of different SQL queries. And uh, also it provides a tool to generate input data of different sizes. Uh, uh, the input data actually is uh, consistent from a bunch of uh, different tables uh, that we can, uh, in a simple way, we can present as a graph that they connected among each other. Some tables are quite small, like, like a date, dim, or item on this graph. Some, uh, some tables are pretty big one, like a store returns and store sales. So, uh, uh, and uh, of course, input data, we needed to have a data source. Uh, basically, just uh, there is a command line tool which allows us to generate uh, CSV text data as input uh, of different sizes, starting from one gigabyte to one terabyte. Uh, so, uh, and uh, it also provides uh, already 99 uh, distinct SQL queries. Actually, every query should uh, kind of answer a business question, business problem uh, in some business context. And so almost all queries are kind of templated, which uh, allows us to use the different input parameters for this query. And uh, we can use this query to, to compare a different SQL implementation uh, about regarding its completeness or and performance. First of all, we wanted to run a TPC DS uh, via Beam SQL, of course. And the goal of this uh, was like, a, of course, to compare the performance of Beam SQL on different runners and environments. Uh, maybe detect and define some missing uh, SQL features that are not uh, implemented or not supported by Beam SQL. And of course, with this extension, we can uh, find some uh, performance issues in Beam. So uh, there is already, as I mentioned, TPC DS extension in Beam. It's implemented for Java SDK. Initially, it was a con a con contributed by uh, UFU as a part of Google Summer of Code project uh, in 2020. So uh, it was a supported only data flow runner. Uh, as the input, we can uh, use only text uh, uh, files in the CSV format. And uh, unfortunately, only three of all other queries uh, passed. So uh, starting to work on this, we also interested to, to support of other runners. So in the first order, we added support of Spark Runner. And uh, also we added support of Spark it input. Why we needed Spark it input? We will talk a little bit later about this. And uh, fixing some uh, query syntax issues and uh, some uh, minor things, we, we managed to actually to pass 25 of all other queries. Uh, so it's a uh, quite good result, but still we still have uh, many queries that fails. And why? Uh, the most common issues are related to not su supported operation in Beam SQL for different reasons, uh, mostly like a different type of joins or order by without limit. Uh, so. The work is uh, ongoing, so I hope once it will be supported in the Beam SQL, we will be managed to run it with the TPC ADS extension as well. Uh, and um, so, but uh, not only Beam SQL we were interested in, we wanted also to compare uh, and to run uh, TPC ADS queries uh, with uh, different implementations on Beam. 
so as an example, we took a query three uh, for that. So actually, it's quite a simple uh, query, as you can see on the slide. But uh, it's already contains uh, almost all data processing primitives. So it's pretty good one uh, way to test. And uh, we wanted to run and implement and run in, in different ways on the Beam and then pure Spark pipelines. So as you can see, this query just uh, read a, a bunch of different columns from three different tables and join, uh, join them in different way, group by, order by, and then limit. So it, it contains some aggregation function as well. So pretty good query to run. Uh, so, okay, obviously first implementation is, is using Beam SQL and uh, CSV input format. So it's a pretty, um, uh, pretty simple one. We just use a text IO to read data from, uh, from file system. Uh, actually, it will return us a p-collection of strings, and we needed to process this p-collection into uh, Java Pojos, which actually uh, already supported by uh, by Beam Schema, uh, as you can see. So in this way, we can use this uh, as an input so for our SQL transform, and then just run our query on top of these uh, p-collections from three different tables. And then we just format our result into CSV uh, format as an output. So it's pretty straightforward one. But uh, is it really CSV as the best format for benchmark? Well, uh, at least uh, it already works with the uh, generated data with uh, uh, from the tool that uh, provided kind of from a TPCDS benchmark. So uh, and. Uh, it will be nice to, to compare with uh, other uh, environments and systems that run on, on the same data. But uh, at the same time, it's CSV format is not uh, good enough for different SQL data optimization, like a column projection, filter predicates, and so on. Uh, so we also wanted to try to use a different format, OK? And we choose the parquet for that. And uh, actually, Databricks uh, provides some kit to generate files as an input as well. So in this case, our uh, pipeline will be changed a little bit. We still use a Beam SQL, but uh, inst uh, instead of the text input, we use a parquet IO as an input. And in this case, we can use a projected schema. So we just read only columns that we needed in, in our uh, SQL queries. So it's a kind of uh, manual uh, optimization. So in this case, as uh, output of our source, we will have a big collection of generic records. So it's our schema and generic records. And then we just run it uh, SQL transform on top of that as well. So this is a kind of uh, how it works in a schema-based way. Uh, so in this, in, in, uh, just want to mention that in this way, in this case, we don't need it to to transform our data from a string format to something else. We just already have a big collection of uh, generic records in our schema, which is uh, supported by schema as, as well. So actually, this work uh, opens some uh, missing uh, SQL features that we have in the Beam SQL, and probably can be useful in terms of optimization and to run a query like this. So first of all, uh, Databricks uh, generation tool actually partition data columns on different paths. So it will be nice to have something like a partition by uh, on a Beam SQL as well. So we created a Jira task for that. Uh, also, uh, for Beam SQL, we can use not a pure parquet IO. We can use a table provider with a parquet table. And then parquet table should uh, support a different column projection and filter predicate. So uh, column projection, I think it's already implemented. Filter I predicate push down, it's still pending. And uh, also one of the good optimization could be uh, to have some statistics or raw estimation about your input data for parquet table. Because for example, in this case, when we want to, to join one or two small tables with the huge one tables, we don't want to, to use uh, just a co group by key. We, we want to use, a, for example, map site uh, joins joint strategy. But uh, for doing this, uh, optimizer should know the input size of tables. Uh, so this jury is still open. 
Uh, and uh, in the same, um, after we decided also to implement the same queries three uh, using just pure Beam Java SDK for different input formats as well. In this case, we don't use SQL transform at all. We just implement everything uh, as a normal kind of as a man written Beam pipeline in Java. Uh, and as you can see here, we needed to convert like from string to key values and run a co group by key, p transform on top of that, and then convert it back. So actually, it takes uh, some additional operations, which is not good for performance. But we will see th the results later. And actually, our pipeline is getting a little bit more complicated. Well, for parquet format, it's kind of pretty the same, just some additional also do events that we needed to implement. Because we didn't want to use a beam uh, schema in this case as well. We just wanted to compare pure uh, string or generic record implementation comparing to beam SQL. So uh, some runs that we did uh, locally, uh, well, it's based on a Spark 2 for seven, but actually we did run for Park 3 as well. Not too much difference in terms of, of the results. Uh, we run it locally with the four workers, with a Spark runner, and uh, with with two different formats, as I mentioned before, with a Parquet and CSV, and just run on a normal MacBook Pro. So uh, some results uh, as we I want to focus like uh, on several things here. Uh, first of all, we wanted to compare different implementation, as I mentioned, Beam SQL against the Beam Java SDK uh, pipelines. So as you can see, the Beam SDK based pipelines a little bit faster. This is in red, comparing to Beam SQL in blue. And uh, also wanted to compare uh, to to see what is the difference between uh, between uh, input formats. Uh, it happens that despite of difference transforms between string and so on for beam sql it's faster than a beam parquet or uh, than just a parquet uh, input so uh at the same time there are many things can be improved uh, for parquet input in beam uh, as i mentioned before so probably it will be faster and also we wanted to compare beam pipelines with a pure Spark pipeline, so because uh, of obvious reasons, and uh, it's quite interesting that we can see that uh, Spark SQL, well, of course, is faster than Beam SQL because it's just uh, already optimized uh, for SQL queries, and uh, for especially for Parquet uh, input, it uses a lot of uh, SQL pushdowns, so uh, most of the query actually is run a kind of SQL pushdown on Spark. So that is why it's much faster than um, S uh, CSV format as well for Spark. Uh, back to Isman. Hey, OK, thanks. Uh, OK, so now it's, it's time to run this in a distributed system in clusters. That was more interesting for the audience of this. And it's time to make a next warning, warning number three, and is that making a fair benchmarking the cloud is really, really hard. For different reasons, well, different instances can change and vary a lot in CPU and RAM speed, depending on each cloud vendor. So if we have one instance in one vendor, it's not the same equivalent in the other vendor. So that's one issue to compare between different systems. Of course, some, some, sometimes you can have network issues or network issues against the distributed file systems you are using. And also, each cloud and each Hadoop distribution has this own, or Spark distribution has this own default configurations and, and hacks that uh, can affect the results. And of course, sometimes we just don't know some configuration issues, like in the case that I mentioned, that you can see here down, that compares this, that just not knowing how some things work is can produce different results or how they are configured. Okay, so what we did for our case was to create a really simple setup. It was it's a master worker cluster in that runs on Amazon EMR with Jan cluster deployment. So we have one master and, and four workers uh, that is a simple cluster. And all the all the data sets for TPCDS were generated in S3. So the main goal here was not to change any defaults. We wanted to use the default settings of, of the EMR. And uh, so we could compare both, both implementations. 
Uh, so we created, as, as Alexi presented, different implementation from NetBeansQL with the two input formats and also with Beam SDK, uh, the, the one that is optimized for map side join. And also we run this for all, for all these sizes. And, and for each uh, of these combinations, we run, run it three times and we took the worst time with a um, difference of around 5% variance. So, um, so we, we had some issues to run the biggest size uh, with SQL uh, CSV on the spot runner, so there are no results for that. So when, when, I, when I started to run these things, we, I was optimistic that everything will go smoothly. And then I started with the smaller size and surprise, uh, it was not working. So I, uh, th then we, we, we found the issue. The issue was that uh, there was a, a Jackson library that came by default in the EMR class path that uh, produced a conflict with Beam. So we had to fix yeah. this for, for the Spark Runner and, and well, for Beam in general, we, we fixed the code. And also we found one, another issue with the Flink Runner that is a still an ongoing issue. Uh, so that's the reason why we, in, in this presentation, we only compare Spark and, and not Flink. Then I tried to run with the 10 gigabytes data set and surprise, again, some issues. And this one was a really silly issue is that Parquet.io by default, the, the, the implementation by default was not uh, part reading the partitions correctly. It was not partitioning, let's say somehow. Safe is you explicitly said with a split. And this is like a terrible default that we fix now. So we, right now it, it uses parallelism by default. So that's another thing. So. Now that it was parallelizing the reads correctly, we could we could read the next step that was 100 gigabytes, and then we hit another issue, and then the next issue we hit is is, is an interesting one because uh, ES, uh, Amazon S3 was canceling the reads because the connections were open for too much time, like uh, we, we didn't renew or at least uh, release, especially the the the, the readers. And also it was warning of about, about, about not uh, totally drain input streams. So we had to fix those. And then finally we could run everything uh, in, in all sizes. Then we also wanted to check how, how it will work in, in Google Dataflow. So we create a constraint cluster of four equivalent in between quotes machines, because well, you know, it's not exactly the same CPU capacity and, and but at least it's the same RAM. And, and also we put the data sets in Google Cloud Storage so we can make the runs. Similar, we did the, the, the three, three implementations with different data set sizes. And some interesting difference here is that we were also uh, running in one case with unlimited workers for Dataflow with four workers and with unlimited workers, which really improves the parallelism and the speed. Uh, Something that really was good with Dataflow is that we could run all of those without issues. And, and I want to give credit what credit is due. Everything ran smoothly even before we did the fixes. For example, this fix that, that uh, released the connections on the, of the readers on Parquet, it didn't hit Dataflow, probably because it's implemented differently than, than Spark Runner. So when we were doing this, we there was some discussions in the mailing list about some performance regressions on reads. And basically, Beam is moving into a new read API that is called Splitable Dufon. And in the open source runners, there were some issues. And in our particular case, we noticed a degradation of between 25 and 30% performance for the reads in, in Spark. So we uh, submitted a PR to revert this, at least for the Spark runner, to the classical read for the moment until we figure out what is going on. And curiously, I, I run both versions with the previous uh, read API and with splitable phone on data flow. And I couldn't find a difference. That's an open question. I don't know why it works. Well, again, it's a different implementation. So well, finally, we have the benchmark results. Uh, first, we have here a comparison that's, well, as I said, is not exactly a one-to-one -one comparison because we are talking about different clouds and, and different systems. But for the four machines cluster, we have a performance, a considerable performance difference between data flow and, and, and Spark. Uh, well, something we can do in the in the future is to run this on Dataproc to to have our, at least the same kind of machines. But well, we can see the difference already. In a smaller sizes, uh, the difference is still there. Something that is uh, good to highlight is that Spark Runner uh, uh, with Beam was slightly faster for for these four machines than Dataflow, and of course Spark Runner has still the, advan the advantage. 
Then we run for packet files. And here is interesting because you can see in, in the third line, we have the optimized version with map site join. And as you can see, this is uh, really faster than the um, SQL version at the moment. Uh, so so that's, that's something that the SQL of Bing can probably improve on. And then for the smaller versions, you know, we can again see, see the difference uh, more, more in detail for, for both, for especially for the Spark runner, there was a huge difference because of this uh, different join strategy. So that's, that's another one. And for Dataflow, we did a run with unlimited workers, as I mentioned, and we could see a really good performance improvement. Of course, we cannot compare four machines against all the workers that Dataflow is going to release for these runs. But what was interesting is that the, the numbers were closer now to the ones we have with Rose Park with four machines. So it parallelizes better. So now the question that we had before was, what is the overall head of Beam? But maybe the question that we came to resolve is, where is the overhead of Beam? And as you can see, well, we, we already mentioned the, all these issues we had with SQL completeness and optimization for the join with the IO connector for parquet and, and the different issues we hit, the runtime issues and the translation issues of the of the read API, the read transform uh, API. Uh, but also, well, sometimes there are implementation issues that hit hit us, and of course, the the beam model overhead that can can also be important. And thanks to profiling these runs uh, locally, we found some, some performance issues that were uh, like the typical silly errors in Java, like uh, creating lots of strings and then uh, adding, uh, adding those, concatenating those uh, in not appropriate manner. That of course produce a lot of allocations. And well, we fix all of these and already upstream. And thanks to Dan Cole, because he was the one profiled and, and helped us fix those. And then, well, more, more, more important, because this is what we cannot avoid, what is the overhead of the Beam model? And of course, as programmers of Beam, you already know that every element on Beam has uh, an associated uh, event timestamp. So you can imagine that all, at, at the difference with native Spark is that we always want to have an extra timestamp field. But also internally, the Beam runners add also more information. They have the windows or, uh, that a single value belongs to. And also we have the pain information that will be used for triggers afterwards. Of course, this extra size well, means that you require a little bit more memory and this uh, the small overhead is around 13 bytes per, per record. And also, well, some extra garbage collection. And also, of course, if we are distributing this, when we shuffle the data, well, it will, it will has to serialize and send more data. So this can somehow be tackled by smarter encoding, at least for the batch case, because some, some of those uh, can be figured out or we don't care about, like timestamp, for example, or, or, or the global window. Also, and probably more interesting, but we couldn't go deeper into this at the moment, we have not gone deeper, is the, the group by key in Beam. It also groups by window. It's group by key and window, because well, all the keys from the same window should belong together. But it also does other tasks, like it merge windows, it adjusts the timestamps, it drops data for the spy windows, and of course it, it triggers the results, and it the, the results. So, so again, we're talking about more CPU use and, and probably more garbage collection. And of course, we have not even gone deeper to, to the timers and state management that can also add a little bit of overhead. Uh, one thing that is clear is that by assuming some standard facts of, of a batch pipeline, we can optimize this uh, for, for the runner case. Uh, from what I heard, Google Dataflow already has optimizations of this kind for, for the Dataflow runner, so we can do it for the Spark runner too. And also, uh, this, 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 there are some other issues because we, in, in this example, we use Parquet.io that produces generic records, but Beam SQL uses Beam rows. So we end up doing this extra transformation between types and improving this also, or, well, we, we could improve some of those, and but the, the improvement and including the, the profiling improvements, we're getting between two and 3% extra performance that is not huge, but well, it shows that there are also some things too that we, we can improve on. So the conclusions, uh, of this talk, okay, so we're glad that because of this we could resolve many issues, in particular in three categories. Well, we have eight issues that were blocking us from running TPCDS and that we fixed. We have some issues that 
because of those issues, we found other nice to have issues like this default of Parquet IO and, and, and others that we also fixed or at least reported. And also, well, we have all these performance improvement issues. Some of those have been upstream, some of those are pending. So that, that was a good result somehow. And of course, we have the lessons that we learned. One, one of is that the defaults matter a lot uh, because of the splitting case and, and, and the default configuration of the, of the system in EMR. And also, well, that, that's not surprise, but uh, for me, I was I was thinking that the smaller scale could be good enough, but not in the case of benchmark, but no, we really need big scale, real life scale, so to find real life issues. Of course, in a project like Beam that is supposed, to, well, it's, it's a layer to translate and run in different systems, probably running in different platforms and clouds matters because we can find more issues in, in all of those. So running in Amazon was like a good experience for that. Uh, also, well, as I mentioned before, me measuring big data pipelines performance in the cloud is hard and it's hard because even sometimes things don't, don't work. I, I had one or two times when EMR was let's say broken or it was not working. Or again, I was running on snapshot versions of Beam in Dataflow and also there were issues. So it's always, there are some extra issues. Uh, also, well, in the end, it's, it's a question also of we are comparing systems that are not targeting the same goals. Uh, well, Spark has been optimized for this parquet batch data lake use case with SQL for at least the last six, six years. Beam has been more optimized to complain uh, to to be part of the Beam model uh, to, to respect the Beam model and allow all this interesting and intelligent streaming semantics. So well, and and of course Beam SQL is like two years old or three or less. So so well, we are still improving it. And of course, finally, there is a price for abstractions. And well, sometimes we, we, we have to assume that this price is there. Of course, the, the ongoing work is to make this price minimal. And finally, we arrive to answer that question of what is the overhead of BIM. Of course, we are not there yet, as I mentioned. This is an ongoing work. Uh, there are lots of things to do. There are many things that are easy to contribute in case somebody is interested. Of course, first ones are trying to improve the missing parts of the SQL uh, lang language of Beam so, so we can run more queries. The next step would be to uh, automate daily runs on, on data flow, uh, data flow, data proc, and eventually Kubernetes on big data sets and create dashboards like the ones we have for Nextmart for those. And also, well, continue these performance improvements in the runner's translation that I mentioned for the batch specific case and, and others uh, continue profiling and finding more things. Uh, of course, some of these issues that I mentioned were because of Java, like this class path issues, but they're probably not an issue on portability, but it would be also nice to test in other languages, like try to run TPCDS on Python or with SQL to see what, what is the overhead of the new execution system that Beam has through portability. And well, more, more interesting also is uh, what are the open questions at the moment? Well, one is how much of these native system like Spark optimizations are blocked now because of the model translation, or because of the Beam model translation, because of the extra group by key tasks and timers and state, etc. And also, well, one, one thing that uh, we have not explored from the BIM runner's point of view is if we can have a schema-based translation of BIM pipelines. The, like, uh, we have the cool schema APIs, but we don't have uh, any runner that really optimizes this execution based on this schema information. So that's something that definitely can improve this in the future. So that's all for this talk.